In this module, we're going to be talking about macromolecules. So we are now moving into the biology section of the ATIT 7 science course. So let's get into it. So macromolecules, move myself over here, are large organic molecules that contain carbon atoms. Four of the six electrons can bond with other atoms, and most macromolecules are polymers, which consist of a monomer, which is a single unit or building block, repeated many times. Monomers join together by covalent bonds, resulting from the removal of water molecules by dehydration reaction or condensation. The, the bonds are broken by adding water, a process called hydrolysis, which breaks down polymers into monomers, and synthesis reactions link monomers together to form polymers. So if we look over here, these are different types of macromolecules. So you have amino acids and proteins, you have fatties, which got broken down to phospholipids, you have carbohydrates, which can get broken down to glycerol or monosaccharides, and you have nucleobases, which are your RNA and DNA. So there are four types of macromolecules. You're going to have your carbohydrates, which are a source of energy. Food sources can include sugars, starches, and grains. They are made from carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Then we have lipids, which are our fats, energy source, and they form the cell membrane. Remember the bilipid phosphomembrane we talked about? Glycerol, triglycerides are some examples, and they are not soluble in water. Then we have our proteins, which work as an enzyme to initiate chemical reactions. They are necessary for life processes, and they structurally form muscles and connective tissues. And they are going to be made of amino acid chains made of carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. And some examples are pepsin, which is a digestive enzyme, hemoglobin on red blood cells, and myosin in muscle cells. And food sources include meat, beans, leafy greens, and vegetables. Then we have nucleic acids. These are DNA made up of chromosomes that code for all proteins. They're made of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. Examples are DNA and RNA, and we can find them in foods like fish, nuts, and fruits. So first, let's talk about carbohydrates. So they are the primary source of energy as they convert glucose. Glucose can be broken down further by fermentation or respiration by glycolysis. There are monosaccharides. These are the simplest carbohydrate consisting of a single molecule of sugar. Then there are disaccharides, which consist of two sugar molecules joining together with a glycosidic linkage. The process of linkage causes one water molecule to be lost, and that's why it is O11 instead of O12, because if you doubled this, if you think there's two of them, right, these numbers would be double, but it loses a water molecule. Examples are sucrose and lactulose. Polysaccharides consist of monosaccharides connected in a series. A polysaccharide is a polymer of carbohydrates. Examples are starch, cellulose, and glycogen. So we can see over here, these are all different types of carbohydrates. We have those monosaccharides these and disaccharides. These are considered our simple. We have our sugar alcohols. And then we have our oligosaccharides, which are three to 10 sugar chains and our polysaccharides, which can be greater than 10. And these are all those examples. And these are considered complex. So lipids. Lipids are hydrophobic, meaning they are not attracted to water and not soluble in water. This is like if you mix oil and water together, you can kind of see their separation, right? They don't all mix. A major role is energy storage and structural function. 
Triglycerides consist of fatty acids linked to a glycerol molecule. Examples include fats such as saturated or unsaturated oils. Phospholipids are the main ingredient in a cell membrane. We talked about that, the phospholipid membrane. And steroids include cholesterol and hormones such as testosterone and estrogen. Unsaturated fatty acids have a double bond between at least two carbons, while saturated fatty acids, the carbon atoms in the chain, is bonded to another carbon by a single bond. So we can see that over here. Saturated fats, you have all these carbons connected with one bond. Our unsaturated fats, you have this double bond between two of the carbons, and that is what makes them different. So macromolecules for proteins. So proteins are macromolecules formed from amino acids. Protein's role includes carrying out chemical reactions, muscle tissue contractions, and regulating other proteins. Polypeptides, which are many peptides linked together. Polypeptide bonds occur between amino acids. And the peptide connections are a result of condensation reaction a condensation reaction results in the loss of water when two molecules are joined together. A hydrolysis reaction is the opposite of a condensation reaction. So during a hydrolysis, water is added and hydrogen is added to one of the smaller molecules and OH is added to another molecule being formed. Amino acids are formed by the partial hydrolysis of proteins, which form an amide bond. The partial hydrolysis involves an amine group. And we can see over here, going back to condensation reactions, so which results in a loss of water when two molecules are joined together. So we see condensation, they're losing water, water out, leading to something else. And then we can see in hydrolysis, the water is coming in. So those are the two different reactions. In a carbon chain of amino acids, there is a carbolytic acid group that's going to be right here in the yellow, an amine group that's going to be right here in the green, a central carbon between them with an attached hydrogen, which will be here, and an attached R group, which is a side chain, which is different for different amino acids. So depending on what type of amino acid is, that R will be different. It is the R group that determines the properties of the protein. All right, so that's the structure. Then we have enzymes. So enzymes are proteins with strong catalytic power. They accelerate the speed at which specific reactions occur. They do not start chemical reactions, but they make them happen faster and more often. They're highly selective, only interacting with substances or reactions that are a match for the active site on the enzyme. Certain enzymes only fit with certain substrates, and they can be used again and again, providing a constant source of energy accelerants for the cell. So we can see we have a substrate and an enzyme, and these activation sites, they are specific for those substrates. As you can see, this one has a round bottom. It would not fit in this hole and vice versa with the triangle to the circle. So they each fit into their specific keyhole lock and then the enzyme does whatever work it needs to on the substrates, which then leaves us with a product. And another example of this is the substrate is the key, the enzyme is the lock, and it is a perfect fit into that active site which then leads to a new product. So nucleic acids are macromolecules that are composed of nucleotides. Hydrolysis is a reaction in which water is broken down into hydrogen cations and hydroxide ions, which is part of the process where nucleic acids are broken down by enzymes to produce so shorter strings of RNA and DNA. Old geonucleotides are broken down into smaller sugar nitrogenous units called nucleosides. These can be digested by cells since the sugar is divided from the nitrogenous base. 
And there are five types of nitrogenous bases, sugars, and the preliminary substances involved in the synthesis of new RNA and DNA. And DNA and RNA have a double helix shape. Cells require energy in the form of ATP to synthesize proteins from amino acids and replicate DNA. And nucleotides are made up of five carbon sugars, such as ribose or deoxyribose, a nitrogenic base, and one or more phosphates. Nucleotides consist of more than one phosphate and can also store energy in their bonds. And they store genetic information. So we can see here a dehydration synthesis reaction. It's pulling water out and making this new product. In a hydrolysis reaction, water is coming in and separating this product into two separate products. We also have, this is an example of a nucleotide. So we have our phosphate groups, our ribose, and our adenosine. And to break the phosphorus group bonds, we need that high energy to be released. And that is the end of the macromolecules module. So make sure to do the worksheet for the section, study the slides, take the quiz, and I'll see you in the next module. Bye.